Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 102 already into April. Does anybody know what today is? Anybody? Anybody? Someone in the comments? Everybody's quiet. Today is the 12th anniversary of the Wix tool set. Just pretty cool. Wow. Huh? Yeah, at least publicly. I mean, if you don't count internal releases, this is the 12th anniversary of the Wix tool set being released as open source from Microsoft. To the day? To the day. Four days wow. after April Fool's, I remember, because people are always joking. Wait, this is four days after April Fool's, so it's probably not an April Fool's joke? Yeah. But it seems like an April Fool's joke. What? Microsoft doesn't do open source. Anyway. To the day, 12 years ago. Um, actually, pretty close to the hour. I was up all night, but this is about the time at which we finally pushed all the buttons and got all the things starting to sync. So anyway... For those of you that are unable to be with us right here, right now, we recorded this so you can be listening to it as you're listening to it. Moving on to the agenda on our 12th anniversary of the Wix toolset. We'll do another update on 3.10.3. We'll talk about it. We'll go from there. We'll do our usual triage and pull request review because Sean has once again sent us an awesome pull request that honestly builds on the last one. Um, and then we'll do questions and comments. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Did anybody watch the keynotes at Build? Wix got a mention right up on the top. First day, big part of thing, all that kind of stuff. Very cool. I don't know that Wix has ever been mentioned at the Build keynote, so that was a very exciting day. Um, so moving on to the 3.10.3, that rolls into this. 3.10.3, as always, there has there will be a 3.10.3 um, build. We will release it soon. We'll talk about what soon means. Uh, the branch, I need to remove this bullet. I still have removed this bullet. The branch does exist, and those fixes are in it. Um, the GDI thing is still open. So as you have probably noticed, uh, we've been really busy around here running around, mostly trying to get not just Wix 3.10s going, but also making sure that we could do the stuff to get uh, Microsoft to say nice things about Wix in the uh, keynote, uh, Wix and Fire Giant. So that was a that was a big day. We did lots of work to try to make that happen uh, to be relevant to the future, as we <laughs> believe we are. Exciting times, more stuff coming. So the net result is that nothing has happened on the GDI side because honestly, their response times dropped off as build got closer. I think everybody at Microsoft is kind of getting ready for the big dev conference over there. Um, so now that build is over, it's time to go start pushing on them as we have time to move forward. Jacob has raised the issue here and other times about maybe getting a release out, so I'm going to save that for the questions and comments at the end that we come back and talk about do we release 3.10.3 early or do we wait for the WinForms thing. Mostly because I just want to make sure we get through triage and then we can chat about 3.10.3's release cycle in, you know, 10 minutes or so. Cool? Cool? All right. Rolling on. Triage. Bob, you ready? I'm ready. So this is actually really encouraging. Five bugs over two weeks. That means we're holding, you know, so far things look all right at doing this every two weeks. So on that front, let's go and start at the bottom of the first bug. Um, this makes me sad if it's true that if we're not updating the um, targets... It is sadly true. So I will take this bug. It's just one file that I missed because yeah. it's in the DTF custom action stuff. Oh, the DTF. It. Yeah, it, mo most of MS build is oh, fine. Oh, CA uh, targets. That's the part I missed. All right. Yeah. We need to get a checklist and check it in every time we do a release or major. Or whatever. just Im improve my grepping skills, which makes me sad. I thought I had pretty good grepping skills. Probably be easier if we just create a list of things. But yeah, well. All right, payload not picked up from package cache prompts for source instead. Uh, is this the one? Log file. This has been going on, right? I saw Sean talking about this issue, about the detection, and in the end, something about they were specifying a cache ID. Yeah, it wasn't clear to me that the cache ID was unique um, when both bundles are present, which is the case during an upgrade, right? Right. You have the first bundle installed, and then you install the second one, and it's present, 
until the previous bundle is is uh, major upgraded away. Uh, I I don't disagree with Sean's comment though that that detection uh, uses a different, uh, simpler, easier, faster uh, technique to detect the presence of the payload than it does during apply. Um, although I don't know that I necessarily want apply to or sorry, detection to be, you know, computing hashes. Yeah, we don't want to do that um, because it will be way too slow because detect is designed to be fast um, given where it runs. All right, let's leave this open and we'll discuss this bug um, over time. But it sounds like there's something in here that we could do to help prevent this sort of um, communication. Or at least we should try to figure out if there's something we can do to avoid this sort of problem where people do this. Not that I have a solution good. here. No, me either. Uh, so that makes it 3x? 3x, I believe. Silent installation if access to... Yep, yeah, Sean found it. Log file. You know, we have a bug open that if our log file can't be written, I think we just give up. So, um, let's, I think this is a dupe. Peek here. Yep, this is the same thing. So we can dupe it to that bug. If we fix one, we'll fix both. We need to do something when we can't write our log file. Don't exactly know what that should be, but we should do something. Bundle doesn't uninstall a permanent package on a failed bundle install, but deletes the cache during rollback. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this is what we have to do. They didn't delete all this extra stuff that they're supposed to. Oh, well. Yeah, this is the problem in that we don't have a way of having packages clean themselves up, so if the bundle doesn't do it, nothing ever will. Right. But that's, you know, that's not a... Oh, and but flaw. yeah, then they will detect that A is already installed and will not cache it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Right. That was the thing I, I pointed to. It's essentially a duplicate of that bug. Although Unfortunately, the bundle RPG. will will prompt for source on repair, so you will eventually get this into a good state when you get there. Well, only if you can provide source. Well, you're going to yeah, you're always going to get in situations where eventually you're going to have to provide source. There's always that possibility. There's there's there are situations. It's always where that a can possibility. Happen. Yeah. Yes. The, the the problem is it, it, we haven't really solved the problem of of the you know the self extractor. Going away, yeah. Um, we never cache a compressed bundle with its payloads, so we have to provide an alternate way of caching payloads, even if they're not necessary to avoid this issue. I mean, what would because I mean, there's no there's no solution uh, except for re-downloading the compressed bundle. Yeah, or if you go, oh, you already have A, let's put the cache in place for A, but A won't necessarily be from that source, except it wouldn't be in this case, but I guess then we'd have to add the source, I and mean, we could do that. We could say, all right, here's this A, and then let's make sure the source is here in the cache and all that kind of stuff. Um, I thought it ended up as, as an alternate source. It, it probably does. Or, 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 sorry, I think, I, I, I'm assuming worst case burn will automatically provide that cache path as a source when MSI says, hey. I don't I remember if we do the work to add source to the cache location every time versus saying, oh, we launched this MSI from the path, from the right. package source, therefore MSI will automatically register it. Yeah. No, I don't, I, I don't think it's automatic, but... I don't know what to do about this. There's there's badness around this, no matter what. Well, do you think this bug is distinct from the one I filed? About the... Below? Oh. Oh, 
Maybe not. Sorry, I thought this one was the one. Yes. No, this is the same thing. Okay. That's a sledgehammer in this case. Yep, I agree. Yep, this is the bug. Yep, it's a dupe of that bug. We still don't have a solution for either, so yeah, that's a dupe. Agreed. Well, luckily, the, the cache always works. I mean, it's a sledgehammer, but yeah. it does work. And, yeah. On a permanent package, will we remove it? Does, on cache always, does it get removed if the bundle gets removed? If, uh, if you roll back all the way, the cache is removed, but the if package you, is left. If you it. uninstall the bundle, it will take the cache, too. Yeah. Yeah, this is just Windows installer being stupid about its management of sources. So it's, it's, it's an impedance mismatch between what we want and what they do. So well, it's, it's also a problem of, of calling something permanent, quote unquote. Yeah. We yeah. don't roll back a permanent package, which is probably the right thing. Yeah, I'm sure if we did, we'd get somebody else telling us it's the wrong thing to do. So exactly, and and, and that that that's how you end up with with certain products having the concept of permanent and no, really permanent. <laughs> Yeah. All right. It's a it's dial, a dupe, but we're we still don't. Bull. Yeah, we still don't have a. We still don't have a solution, but yes, it is an issue there. Cash, cash always is a, is a good workaround, or a workaround. Yeah. Yes, this is a bug. Yes, this is a bug. Either the documentation is wrong or. The code is wrong, but um, the documentation is the intent. The code apparently is not doing quite right. So, I'm betting we don't have a lot of people using the custom progress bars. Yeah, probably not. So anyway, uh, four I think breaking change for the people that aren't because you know suddenly your progress bar if you had one is going to start drawing or crashing or who knows what it's going to do. I don't know what happens if you start asking to draw out of a bitmap that isn't that wide. Yeah, it's a behavior change. I hate it because it's a simple fix, but... I don't really want to be messing up three. Change. Yeah. I just... We're past that. Right? We're past doing stuff to three that messes up three. Yeah, let me shot it. It's a behavior change. If, if someone's using this, it, it's working the way it is now. So yeah, I I, I reluctantly agree. All right, that's actually pretty good triage. Rolling through helps that a couple of them are our duplicates that we recognized. Pretty good triage. All right, so pull requests. So this is great. Sean went back and after discussion from last week, did the thing that we said, hey, it would be great if this code did the complex part. So this is going after two issues, and it includes the commit from 341, which we didn't take because I wasn't sure where we were going to go with it, but then Sean did an awesome thing to actually fix the whole kit and caboodle, hopefully. Um, I'm not sure how much we want to go through it here because there's plenty to go through. Um, but with this, we can get rid of the old pull request, I assume. Um... Well, it's actually included in this, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, well, Sean, it looks like it, it actually, you essentially remove most of that, right? Like the H source engine file goes away. That's true. So maybe we could squish this a little bit and it would end up with less deletes. This code surprised me, but then I saw that it ended up being... Oh, no, this is not, this is not the one that surprised me. This is just getting rid of code that we probably don't need as much now, right? Because we're passing the handle. Oh, it was in a pull request. That's right. Merged. Yeah, we took yeah. that one. Right, because yeah. that actually yeah. fixed the bug. Made life better. And now we're rolling on to make it better, better. More better? Best? I guess best is what I wanted there. Um, and that cleans up this whole progress thing, which is actually kind of nice, too. Better, better sounds good. <laughs> All right, so parsing command more line. perfect union. 
Oh, good grief. I'm definitely not going with that. Um, right, so now the engine state stores the command line, which I thought was interesting. What was the thinking there, Sean, to store the command line on the engine state? I want to have to parse it multiple times. And so here we get the duplicate handle for the current process. And I, that allows, this is allow, the true here is the allow inheritance, right? That's the important bit. And then we add it to the command line to have, pass the handle down. So pretty. And so we have the attached file handle attached. And then we have self. So this is oh, what's the secure? Oh, I see secure attributes is empty. Open the existing file. So this opens our cells, and we pass that handle down. And then there's the the attached to command line. Right, it's the XE that's being run. Yeah, these are hard to look at here. You have to go see them where they're being used. So here, instead of parsing the command line and all that, we get to do it once. I see. Okay. And then we ignore these because the handles were handled way, way earlier. And now part of the section is the source engine file. And then here's our new talking to ourself arguments. There's our argc and argv header detect reset according to our session. Right. This cleans up that too. This is this is good. So far this is cleaning up stuff that was always kind of like mm, not so great. So here we then create the process inheriting our handles. Fixing typos, removing ones is probably a good thing. And in engine run, we call parse command line to get these things. Okay, so we've added to the app, which probably is a good thing since we're going to have probably more of those things. And then we initialize the engine state with that command line information. All right. Command line, command line. A little bit interesting that engine runs calls an app function, but that's probably all right. It's better than pushing the engine state outside of the engine and into the stub, probably. Here is us handling the two command line switches we want for getting our handles. Yep. It's so cool that you can pass handles as numbers, or strings as numbers. Well, you can do the same thing for window handles, too. So it's nice. All right, so then we clean up that, which is all good. All right, so here we are in Run Untrusted, where we send the attached. We send this handle to the command line. And we get to the clean room. The self. Wait, how are these different? Send a file handle for the child. Oh, for the child burn process. Yes. H file. Who's self? Oh, this comes out. Okay. Oh, we're getting it to the clean bundle. Got it. So we're going to hold on to the clean room as well inside this parent.
and then we create this bad boy. We do all of the work here instead of calling our happy friendly function. We already closed the thread and handles, handles the self and things like that. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure I'm thrilled about this handle to s handle self to command line. Self. So it's really that you're passing the clean room to itself so that it can't get deleted. Is this the trying to prevent it from being deleted, Sean? Yeah. That's tricky. I hadn't thought of that. That's actually a really good idea. That's a very good idea. So rather than worry about the engine having to start up in a certain amount of time, the guy that's currently already running gets a hold of him and will prevent him from being deleted. And this is the guy that sticks around until uh, the child is done, correct? Well, he... he even if he didn't stick around, he's he's the one that does a create process. So he's passed the handle to the child before you know in the create process. So there's like there's no time window under which yeah the, yeah uh, the thing doesn't get created. Although I guess you no, know, and we've passed the handle which has been duplicated, so it's handed off. So yeah, yeah. I'd like to see the UX container put into the PE header so we don't have to touch the file system. Um, I think we're limited on how much we can put in the PE header. Because the UX container could be big. Uh, big, big size. Big. Yeah, because it could have Not extremely large. large images. So it is unbounded, we could say that. So I don't know that we can do that, unfortunately, because I've had the same thought. It would be very cool if we could. But I don't know that Windows is going to be happy with us doing that. Yeah, I know. I agree. The bundle manifest would be interesting. But, yes. Although they can get big, too. They can get very big with all the hashes in them. So, the compressed bundle manifest. <laughs> it's just going to make us look more and more like a virus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. All right, and then here we pass the handle to itself. I see. So then we're like, hey, we're going to launch you. Here's your handle to yourself. Have a nice day. That's awesome. Inherit those handles. All that's good. Awesome. And shell execute doesn't support that, which means we can't pass the handles over the elevated boundary, but I think that's probably by design there. So a lot of that stuff, Jacob, putting the bundle ID, the version, some of those things, if we can come up with a finite list of them, that's all right. Related bundles, we might not be the upgrade code, certainly, but not all of the related bundles. But there's certainly more stuff we could stick in there. Although I've had problems where you can't grow the size of that section, so it needs to fit in whatever the size of the section is. Yeah, the bundle ID is already in there. The version isn't, I don't know, the version of the burn engine is. I don't know what the version of the bundle is. But tossing the version of the bundle and the upgrade code should fit as well. I mean, it's what, 128 bytes for a good? And a version is a... Bits. What? It bits? Oh, 128 bits. I'm not even getting that right. Yeah, it's, and D words what? Uh, sorry, a version is a couple D words with our world today. So. Yep. Today. Today. Um, all right. Yes, yeah, verify this memory header, this section header is cool. And this is nice. Get rid of more code that handles process to itself. It's like, hey, we passed the engine to ourselves. This is this is much better. I missed this on my first scan through it that what this was doing, but this is much better than what we were doing before. Much, much better. M verify more than just a good. Yeah. I'm not thrilled with this commenting spacing, but Whatever. Yep, this is just parsing the header. Verifying the codes are the same. Which is reasonable. Check just to make sure that you kind of got the right thing. What are we doing here? The stub now gets the path for current process and passes the engine to the engine run as soon as it 
can basically run. So after initializing an array, go do that. Yep. Release those handles. Down here, we do, oh. Uh, so this is doing the same thing we were doing in the n engine code in the BA code now. Did th was this always necessary, Sean? Like, was this just a bug that it wasn't here before? Or is it because it got moved that this needs to be here now? Because you needed to re-implement app parse command line. That you needed to implement I app parse command line inside the Bush effort command line args. I'm expecting this bug was probably always there. Yeah. And that's straightforward. Yep, yep, yep. And then this is just lifted code. Yep. All right. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. So since we took the fix that was a lesser version of this, the, the less the lesser, lesser um, fix of this. Um, what do you think about taking this? It's bigger, but this is going to solve a lot of the crazy. Yeah, so this is what Sean's asking. Is this too crazy for it there? I think this is going to solve a lot of our problems. Well, you didn't actually merge the the previous. I did not. The ancestor of this. Exactly. Um, but yeah, this it's a pretty has big change, the, but it, it it solves some real problems that we're seeing. So. All right, so let's move on in our agenda because we're at the point at which we're we're here at questions and comments. So 3103, because this is basically what we're getting to. Yep. Um, so we, we have we have two options. One is we could go with the set of fixes we have now, um, assuming the WinForms thing is going to take us a long time to get a solution for, which means we've basically committed ourselves to a 3104 if we do that. Um, the other option is to continue to wait on the WinForms thing, and now that we're post-build, which means I will once again have a bit more time to go lean on them, and hopefully they'll be after post-build that will be um, good. We can wait a little longer for uh, 3.10.3 release. So continuing on that path, I'd like to vote for the um, to waiting a little longer, not just because I want to try to lean on the WinForms guys a little longer because of the build messing all of the schedules up, but also because we could get this fix in and we could bake it a little longer. We could try it out a little harder, you know, just make sure that it works while get, trying to get the WinForms fix to come in as well. So that would be the way I would go, but I'm totally open to other ideas. So I was, I was looking at this pull request as something I would really have no serious problem taking into 3.11. Yep. Um, you're talking about pulling it into 3.10.3 or 3.10.4. Yes. I'm talking. No, I'm talking about turning it into 3.10.3. 3.10.3, okay. As a better fix for the fix we already took for this. As, as More importantly, as the fix for the thing we already took. Like, we already took a fix with the whole source attached container and things like this. This is a better fix for that. True. That's what we're taking. I don't know how to parse that, Jacob. One one. I don't know if there ever was a Wix one one. In fact, I'm pretty sure there wasn't. <laughs> it went straight from one o to two. But granted, that was a rewrite from VV script to C sharp. So, thank God for that. Uh, um, can you fix your version, Jacob? Which version are you thinking? Is that supposed to be eleven or three dot one? Fix is a noun. This is. I'm, I'm, an iteration of the previous fix, I think, is what he's saying. Okay. Ah, got it. So you're saying put it uh, in three ten three. Yeah, except I don't think it's it's a fixed version one point one. This is more like a fix v two. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, as far as you know, scope goes. 
Well, it it removes some nice, it removes some not great things that we discussed quite a bit of like that whole sending extra yeah. messages. Yeah. We don't do that anymore, so that's gone. Right. Um. Yeah, but it, <laughs> Jacob says it right. It's a little scary, yeah. but it cleans up a lot of the things we're doing. Yeah, yeah I think uh, if we can, uh, and we have to figure out, you know, how we actually bake something like this. Um. I think we we do a build and we release the URL to people without publishing it to everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John's not here, but he's usually really great about picking up things and testing. And I bet if we get it to Phil, he'll try it as well. I think he had some update scenarios. Yep, that's the key. I just I want to make sure, you know, because the compressed bundle update thing slipped through, that we we have some coverage on things that this changes. Um, okay, so without without solving this particular problem. Um, if we do want to wait, um, can we talk about a you know a deadline for no longer waiting? Yeah. Like you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, where we say, you know, we haven't made progress with the GDI plus team and therefore we're gonna have to spill over into a three ten four. Um sure. Um how long do you want this change to bake? Sean, how long do you want this change to bake? Three weeks after the build. All right. So you want three weeks to to have people kind of kick this around? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can I can live with that. <laughs> okay. So then that would say in two Wix meetings we make the either the WinForms thing is in or like coming in, or right. we're we're doing a three ten four. And we can actually even then discuss if you know what what is what is three ten four if it's if it's just the the GDI plus failure is that critical uh, or or are we closer to three eleven but I don't know that we're going to be close to three eleven so no we my problem is that still with the the GDI WinForms problems that we have a class of people that are not moving forward to a more secure burn because they can't without rewriting their entire BA in something not using WinForms. I still struggle with that yeah, fact. Yeah. Well, sorry, I was I was proposing that we could discuss whether, you know, we have to whether shipping 3103 in a month or whatever forces us to have a 3104. Um, but fair. because I, I'm also like, you know, if if we don't know in a month from GDI plus what's going on, then or what's or, the chance that we're ever going to? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess at a certain point, this isn't a question so much of of you know what goes into three ten three versus three ten four. It's uh, a question of you know uh, maybe at what point do we give up on on getting assistance from the people who actually caused the bug? Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, let me. I have a couple of weeks to go get back and lean on them. So yeah, yeah. The build was a a ginormous distraction, um, positive distraction for everybody. A positive distraction, but um, for us in the end, but a, a distraction. <laughs> not for this issue. Not for this issue. <laughs> Definitely not for this issue. Yes. All right. So we'll get a build of this out. We'll get this in, and get a build out today tonight kind of thing, um, get it up there, and then we can send the URL to um, Wix devs and ask nicely for people to try it and see if it fixes the update issues the way we believe it will. Yeah, that sounds good. And in two weeks, we'll have our usual meeting where we might discuss how it's going. Hopefully, people will say it's looking good. And two weeks after that, we will have the final discussion about GDI, hopefully, or if we don't get it sooner. Cool. All right, I'm going to take that as a yes. Other things, things people want to bring up, discuss, otherwise talk about? No? All right, well, we're about five minutes over because we start about three minutes late, so um, if there's nothing else, this is good. Um, Sean, fantastic. That was an awesome fix 
to address all the root causes of all the different things in very nice form. Um, I I think that's it on that note. Um, hopefully things get a little bit back to normal. We'll take a little bit. This week is still kind of mopping up, but hopefully in the next week, two, three, things will be back to normal and we'll be rolling along like we were before. Until then, I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.